Well, saints, good morning, and welcome to our message for this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today we're going to be preaching or receiving a message from our gospel lesson for this Sunday, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 22 to 34. And this time we're preaching uh, from the pulpit here at this wonderful sanctuary, the Mother Church of Black LCMS Lutherans here at St. Philip Lutheran Church, 6232 South Eberhardt. So saints, let's now ask the Lord's blessing and, and welcome, please welcome and please continue to support us as we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ for the salvation of many. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you that because he lived, he died and lives again that he took all of us who will live, who are living, but who will die, will also live again. Bless your word today, dear Lord, as you tell us to let go of worry, to let go of anxiety, and to trust in you, knowing that you control all things, knowing that you put a cover of protection over us, and letting us know we are citizens and members of your kingdom, even here on earth, and expectation of your eternal kingdom in heaven. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God, our rock and our redeemer. O Lord, open thou my lips that I might declare your praise in the presence of your people. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, saints, once again, our text is Luke 12. 22 to 34, and the uh, theme of our meditation is guarded and protected, guarded and protected. Fellow saints of the living God and friends, neighbors, all of us at one time or another are affected by worry and anxiety. Some of us may be dealing with it right now. However, our text tells us today that as children of God, we should have control over both of these serious emotions. And we should see them as what they are, enemies of our faith, because this is what Adam and Eve dealt with when they had sinned. They were afraid of God and hid. And so men and women do even today. Well, the Lord Jesus wanted to make it plain in our text that in this life, we should never get in, give in to worry or, or anxiety because we are guarded and protected by the Lord. And we are guarded by knowledge of his control. He controls everything, saints. We are also guarded and protected by his covering. He's put a hedge of protection around us. The same way he's blessed nature and covers nature, he covers us. And at the same time, we should not worry or fear because we're part of his kingdom, his kingdom rule. He rules forever and ever, amen. And there are blessings that come with this citizenship in the kingdom of God, which is the reason we wanna share it with other people. So let's now turn to our text. We'll go through it as we always have in the past. Uh, and it's in our gospel lesson for today, Luke 12, 22 to 34. First of all, verses 22 to 26, 22 to 26, which tells us about God's control. And uh, Luke writes by the Spirit, Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Saints, it's important to mention that this message is not for unbelievers. You notice it says, Jesus said to his disciples. 
It is written for the followers of Jesus Christ. He spoke to his disciples. He tells them, do not be anxious, that is, take thought, worry, or overly concerned for the things of this life. For this is a constant problem for all of us as human beings, fallen people in a fallen world. One of our great sins is to desire more and more for better and better things, not being satisfied with what we have, wanting better and better things. Now, it's nothing wrong with that as long as they do not own us, but unfortunately, in a number of instances, they own us. You see, when they do, this becomes the sin of greed and covetedness meaning we don't want to share with anyone else. We want to keep it to ourselves. That's where the sin comes in, and that becomes our security, and that very security we think we have gives us anxiety and worry of losing it. You see, the Lord warns his disciples and all of us Latter-day Saints not to be taken in by all of this. We are not to be anxious or worried over such things. Why? Because he is in control of everything. As, uh, as Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord's in charge of all of this. Therefore, he goes on to mention specifics in these verses 22 to 26. Jesus explained to his disciples that it's foolish for us saints to be anxious about food and clothing because life consists of more than these things. God will provide them. He uses the example of the birds and, and he says the disciples were more valuable than unclean birds that God feeds and cares for them. So if God feeds and cares for the birds which don't live hardly as long as we do, how much more? Will he care for us? And they wake up singing. You see, how much more will he take care of his own children who trust in him? See, that's the key word, trust. If you trust, you won't have the anxiety and worry. Because even if the worst happens, you know your God is in control of all of it. Worrying saints is foolish because it cannot bring about change to our situation. Think of it as I study this as a rocking chair. It will get you moving, but it won't take you anywhere, will it? You see, you can't add or we can't add a single second to our lifespan by worrying. And if we can't do something as minuscule and small as that, why worry about other things? Rather than worry, saints, trust in God today, for he is in control. Whatever it is, no, he is in control. You have no control over your life, even when you think you do. He is the one who is in control. And then we go from God's control to God's covering, surrounding us. Verses 21 through 27 through 31 reads, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clo clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. In other words, God's covering is over you if you have the right focus, if you have the right priorities. Because without it, you can walk from under his covering. You see, the Lord Jesus next mentions the covering of God as a major reason not to be worried or anxious. He continues to use nature as examples, like the birds of the air before he speaks about the lilies. The lilies don't worry, yet God cares for this simple aspect of his creation. And he is much more inclined to care for us than lilies and birds. 
Another reason that worry or anxiousness is foolish is because he said all the nations of the world seek these things. In other words, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, are anxious about the things of this life, and that's all that you see in marketing ads. It's one thing for unbelievers to worry, but believers who trust in a heavenly Father should not be filled with anxiety, saints. The unbelievers don't know God, so they're going to have these anxieties and feel they have to get them themselves. But those of us who are followers of the living God, we should not be concerned about this because God doesn't always give us everything we want, but he certainly gives us everything we need. Amen? And you know that. Instead of worry, we should seek his kingdom. And these things will be added to us. In other words, we are not to seek the things of this world which cause us worry, but to pursue the work that God has given us to do. And when we do that, God will bless us with the things we need, even some of the things we desire, as long as it won't hurt our faith. We are to leave our own welfare in the capable and powerful hands of our living God. Amen. You see, for those that seek the will and work of God, the Lord will provide all the necessities of this life. That's his covering of protection. That's his guarding us. The Lord will provide his care, which is dependable and certain. We must remember he is the shepherd and we are the sheep of his pasture, right? He is the shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. That's how much he cares for us. In other words, God guarantees his protection and care for all who truly seek to obey his will and follow his commands by faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, see, if you're following God, if you're seeking to do his will, then you won't be asking or wanting things that are contrary to you know God wants for you. You see, those who daily live a life of contrition and repentance will receive all that they need in this life and even more eternal life with God in heaven. So we know now, saints, we should not be anxious. We should not worry about things in this life because God is in control of everything and God has covered everything. But why else should we not worry? Well, there's something called the kingdom of God. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is described in verses 32 and 34, our final verses. The Lord Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches, approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now you notice he starts off by saying, fear not little flock. It is really a way the Lord is saying, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, the gospels proclaim to everyone, but not everyone will receive it. This little flock are those among the many who will hear the word of God and believe it. Okay. Paul says that he preaches to save a few because unfortunately there will be many who won't follow God, won't believe the gospel. You see, the greatest reason not to worry is that we have the kingdom of God. Specifically, what does that mean? I've told you many times it is the rulership of God in the hearts and the minds of his people, those who receive him by the waters of holy baptism and those who receive him by the preaching of the holy gospel. You see, specifically, those who do this by faith, not on their own, there's some things they get, they receive what that God is giving us so important. One, there is the full inheritance that belongs to the king. All the Lord Jesus said, all that the father has given me, I have given to you and your father owns cattle on a thousand hills. Second, there's the full love and favor of the royal family. Saints, you are a royal priesthood, a chosen people. You have been taken out of darkness into God's marvelous light to have the love and favor of God as you turn to him and know that he loves you very much. 
Third, there's the full privilege of reigning alongside the king. When he returns, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, and we will rule that kingdom along with him. It's hard to believe we can't grasp it, but it is so. And then there's the full provision of every need that we have. If God takes care of the lilies of the field, if he takes care of the, fly, of the birds of the air, he will certainly take care of us. He's given us full provision. If you look at your life, you see that God continues to bless and bless wonderfully. Then there's the full pardon of all of our sins against the king and his kingdom. We are forgiven and the Lord separates our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Isn't that wonderful? It's that kingdom, that covering, that control are the reasons we should never be afraid, never have anxiety. And when we do, because we will as sinners, we can control it remembering who God is by faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now please note that Jesus says it is the Father's joy to give us this kingdom. It is his abundant pleasure to bestow upon us his kingdom of eternal life, his blessings in this life and the life to come, this favor, this status with God, and it's for everyone or anyone who received Jesus by faith. Saints, our loving Father has been waiting for all eternity to do this, and now he is overjoyed to do it. When Jesus said it is finished, it was finished, and the kingdom of God was open to us. I dare say the Father is more overjoyed to bestow upon us his entire kingdom than we ought to receive it, because often we fight him and we struggle, although our arms are too short, right, to box with God. And what should our reaction be to this unexpected and overwhelming bonus? And the Lord says, sell your possessions and give to the needy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, come on now, Pastor. Give up all that I have. No, he's not saying that. We're so focused on this world and ensuring ourselves a good life here. But when our needs are met by God in bestowing upon us his kingdom, everything that we need, we can well afford to be generous. And that's what he's saying when he says sell your possessions. He's meaning that overflow, that extra that you have. Instead of spending it upon yourself, use it to bless other people. You see, we can look around us and be concerned about other people's needs because our needs are met and we have more than enough to share with others. If we have extra possessions, we can sell them and give to the poor. They may not make, this may not make earthly sense, but it makes heavenly sense. And Jesus said that when we are rich toward other people, by giving to others, we're being rich to God. You see, Jesus concludes for us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, God has a way of getting right to the point. The word of God cuts through to, through to the bone and marrow. It's a two-edged sword. We can lie and jive with others, lie to others and jive others, but not with God. You see, God leaves his disciples with a, queer, with a clear question, and that is, what is your real treasure? What absorbs, you, what absorbs your attention and your time? If you're waste, wasting away with wear and anxiety, something is wrong there if you know God. In which world do you live? Do you live in a world of, of, that says God is not part of it? Or do you live in a world where God has covering, where God controls, and where God has a mighty kingdom? You see, Jesus calls us to an unseen but very real kingdom in which he will meet every need of the body, mind, soul, and spirit. The gift of the kingdom is intended to encompass our very hearts. As our bulletin cover reads, and that's for those who come to worship on Sunday, but if you'd like to have one of our bulletins, call us. We'll mail it to, us, to you. Or even if you can come yourself, we do have uh, in-person worship. We have since May of last year. You see, it reads that life as a shepherd's sheep is a life that is guarded and protected. Even though the path that Jesus leads us on may appear perilous, our lives are in his hands. As Martin Luther once wrote, I do not know the way God leads me, 
but I know well my guide. Saints, knowing this, <clears throat> why should we worry? We should not. <clears throat> Because we have God's control, we have God's covering, and we have God's kingdom. May this give us peace, courage, and faith as we live each day waiting for the return of our Lord and as we use it in serving him that other people may come to know the joy of Jesus and escape the worry and anxiety. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So, saints, now that we have completed our message for this morning, <clears throat> I just wanted to say to you that we are having our in-person worship every Sunday at 11 o'clock. The church is open at 1030, and you are welcome to come and worship with us. We uh, still wear masks, and we still have segregated seating. We still keep distances as best we can. So saints, come visit with us if you can. But if you can't, continue to watch our Bible studies on Wednesday and Sunday mornings and as well our Sunday message which you receive today on Sunday mornings at 11. Saints, share the word with other people. Tell other people about Jesus. What should you tell them? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have ever life, everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You know, we know that's John 3, 16 and 17, but Acts chapter, the book of Acts tells us, I think it's chapter 2, that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven by which men might be saved, men and women. All you have to do, saints, all you have to do, brother or sister, repent of your sins and believe in the gospel. And if you are a believer, demonstrate your faith by the way you live. And don't be anxious, don't be worried, because by faith, you know of God's control, you have God's covering, and you are part of God's kingdom. And now may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Hope to see you next week. Amen. Take care.